We are standing outside the riverfront in Montgomery, Alabama because of one man. He died fairly young, but still influenced many people. Yeah, if it wasn't for him, I'm not sure who Elvis would have been or Johnny Cash. They both say he was a big influence on their lives. That man's name, Hank Williams Sr. There he is, right there. We're in his town here in Montgomery, and we're going to show you around a bunch of Hank Williams Sr. places, including his gravesite, his boyhood home, lots of others. We cordially invite you to come along for the adventure. Come along. Hank's childhood was nowhere near ordinary. He was born with spina bifida, which contributed to alcohol and drug abuse later in life. Yeah, also his father had a lot of health issues. At one point he was injured very badly, and at another point he woke up, had part of his face was paralyzed. He went to the doctor and found out that he had had a brain aneurysm. After that, he spent eight years in the hospital. So the kids were basically left to be raised by Hank's mother. Thankfully, she was a hard worker. She would work sometimes two or three jobs at a time to provide for the kids. Also, Hank Williams came through to help the family out. He went and met with a U.S. congressman, or the U.S. congressman was coming through town, and Hank was able to meet with him and told him, that, look, we're not receiving benefit checks for my dad. And so the congressman met with Hank's mom and got it all worked out, and they started receiving the checks. Hank's statue was put up in 1991, facing what is now the city hall, which is where Hank's funeral was. However, not many people saw it at that location, so it was moved here in October of 2016. We are in Georgiana, Alabama, where Hank Williams' childhood home is. Yeah, that's the childhood home of Hank Williams Sr. right there. We're going to take a closer look at it here in a minute. We thought we'd show you a couple other things around here. We got a train over here, home of Hank Williams, and across the street, the Hank Williams Sr. fan club right in that building there. The train says Georgiana, Alabama, home of Hank Williams. The Hank Williams International Fan Club is operated out of this house. It's a nonprofit group dedicated to Hank's memory. Let's take a walk up the steps and onto the porch of Hank's boyhood home, which is now a museum. The house was built in 1850 and is the only remaining house that Hank lived in prior to becoming a star in Nashville. We have now made our way over to Lanier High School where Hank used to attend at the age of 16. Yeah, the building is still standing. It almost has a castle-like look to it. Pretty neat. He didn't take school too seriously when he attended here. They said he would stay out late playing gigs, show up, and end up sleeping through most of his classes. And then he dropped out later that same year to concentrate on his band, the Drifting Cowboys. The school opened here in 1929. It was called the Million Dollar School when it first opened because that's about how much it cost to build it at the time. We are now standing where Empire Theater used to be located. It's now the Rosa Parks Museum, a pretty historical place here. Back then when it was the theater, they were having a talent show one night and Williams' friends and family members, they said, hey, go out there, get in that talent show and see if you might win yourself the $15 top prize. Sure enough, he played his own original song and won the talent show. Soon after that, that's when his career really began to take off. He played the song WPA Blues at the talent show. It was the first song he ever wrote. We have now made our way over to this building, which used to be a light cafe. This is where Hank did his last show in 1952. It was late in December. This is now, actually it's now nothing. It was at one point the 5050 Bar and Grill. It closed down as a light back in 1990. But cool thing is you can actually see the stage in there. I wonder if it's the same one. Let's go take a peek. Here's the stage inside. Could it be the final stage Hank Williams ever performed on? We are now at the Hank Williams Museum in downtown Montgomery. Yeah, unfortunately, they have a very strict policy. It's on that sign right there. No cell phones, no tablets, no nothing inside the museum. So we can't take you in there. However, we can still talk about it. I mean, outside front here, they got a picture of the death car, the Cadillac that Hank Williams Sr. was in when he died. They have the baby blue Cadillac Hank died in located inside this museum. We now made our way over to Chris's. This is Chris's hot dog place. It's a very popular place. If you're ever in Montgomery, you got to come check it out. First of all, four presidents have eaten here, plus Elvis and a bunch of other cool people. But for this story, we're talking about Hank, of course. Now, Hank played here. Apparently, he stood by a jukebox in there when he was just 13 years old and performed. This was while a parade was going on out here on the street, and more people apparently were interested in this little boy performing inside. Also, after concerts, he would come by here, sit in a booth, hidden in the back, 
try to sober up. And when he wasn't trying to sober up, he was trying to do the opposite. He also did a lot of drinking here at Chris's as well. He may have came up with the idea for one of his big hit songs while sitting in this seat. I was told that Hank William was sitting at the counter and he saw a good looking young lady come in and he got the idea of the song of uh, a good looking. I don't know. That's a really good story. Thank you very much. Right over here is the booth that he used to sit in and come here and sober up after playing late night gigs. And over here is the wall of Hank with a bunch of pictures and posters of him on display. We've now made our way over to this building right here. It used to house the studio and radio station known as WSFA. Hank, he was hired to sing two times a week here at the age of 14. While he was doing his show here, he put together his backing band, the Drifting Cowboys. We now made our way over to Oakwood Cemetery where Hank Williams is buried. In the days after his death, 50 to 300 people every hour would come here to pay their respects. Unfortunately, some of them did a little more than paying their respects. They would also take things. They would take some of the flowers. They would take pieces of the ground. They've actually had to change this over to turf so they can't use real grass. I don't know why people wanted the grass from his grave, but I guess they just wanted anything. And actually, there's a little note here from Hank Williams Jr. reminding people, please do not desecrate this sacred spot. Many thanks, Hank Williams Jr. His headstone says, praise the Lord, I saw the light. Hank Williams with musical notes up top. Hank Williams, 1923 through 1953. His famous hat with Luke the Drifter under it. Then a bunch of his hits are on here. A Mansion on the Hill, Long Gone Lonesome Blues, Your Cheatin' Heart, Love Sick Blues, Hey Good Looking, and several others. Here are Hank Williams' boots with the HW on them along with guitars and musical notes. And above them is his guitar. Next to Hank is the grave of his first wife, Audrey Williams. She's the mother of Hank Williams Jr. Hank Williams' mother is buried just off to the right of Hank's grave, right here. And his older sister is right over here next to her. It's always amazing to me when you look back at some of these people who became very famous in such a short amount of time at what they were able to accomplish, him in just 29 years here on Earth. 